Well, as you can see from what's around my neck, I'm a doctor. You know I'm a doctor because I'm wearing a stethoscope. Actually, I'm cheating. I borrowed this from a friend. But I did say to introduce our topic, which is our stethoscope, invented by the neck and this stethoscope that we have here will have been physically made by the neck. As you've seen already, that stethoscope is rather different from the modern one. This is rigid and made of wood. This is flexible with rubber and metal. And the endings are different. This one happens to have only one end piece, a diaphragm. They usually have a diaphragm and a belt. The necks had two different endings, with and without the stopper, but they were for different purposes from the two purposes of the modern endings. So the details of the instrument have changed significantly, but its purpose has remained fundamentally the same from the moment when they invented it in 1816 or 17 until today. And that purpose is to hear and thereby to see inside the patient's chest. So how did Lenek invent it? I'm going to read for you Lenek's own words that is reproduced by his biographer and translated by his biographer Jacqueline Dutton in Lenek's own words of how he invented it. I was consulted in 1816 for a young person who presented with generalised symptoms of heart disease and in whom palpation, that's feeling, and percussion, that's tapping, gave few results because of her plumpness. The age and sex of the patient prevented me from conducting the type of examination I've just described, by which he meant putting his ear directly to the chest. But I recalled a well-known acoustic phenomenon. If one ear is placed at the end, one end of a log, the tap of a pin can be heard very distinctly at the other end. I imagined that this property of bodies could be applied to the case at hand. And then, this is what he did. He took a little notebook, soft down, he rolled it up, so he's made a kind of artificial log, put one end to the chest of the patient, his ear to the other. And not only could he hear her heart, he could hear it more distinctly than he ever had before. I think the remarkable thing about that moment is how simple it was. We had had 2,000 years of Western medicine and nobody had thought of doing that. The probable reason is it was new in the next day to put your ear directly to the chest. That is probably the most important precursor, precondition of this remarkable development. Anyway, that's how this instrument came into being. And so to come back to it, this was made by the neck himself. It's one of five that we know of in the world. There may be a few more, two in this country, two in France, and this one. It's battered, which tells us it was used. It came to Leeds through someone called Atkinson, who had studied with Lenet. And it's important historical evidence because it shows us something of the uptake of the stethoscope and specifically in Leeds. And just as remarkable is the story of how it came to be here. We rescued it. My colleague Greg Raddick heard that the Algernon Firth building was being dismantled and in that building was the pathology museum which had come to be a repository for all old things medical. So Greg put Mark Stedman, the then head of our task force, onto it and he took with him, because it was medical stuff, Claire Jones who had expertise in that area and it was Claire who spotted the stethoscope, found it and rescued it. So we have here a remarkable historical object and a remarkable tribute to the activities of our task force.